This Equipment World video is brought to you by Chevron Dello 600 ADF Ultra Low Ash Diesel Engine Oil. It's time to kick some ash. Hi everybody, welcome back to Equipment World. You're watching The Dirt. I'm your host, Brian, and today we're going to talk about those little obnoxious buzzing things up in the sky. We're going to talk about drones and how drone technology can help you on the job. And here's the best part. It's not nearly as scary as you think it is, and it's not nearly as expensive as you think it is and yet it can save you in a number of ways. So here to talk with us is Zach Peeper from Quantum Land Design. He's going to give us the ins and outs in a very short 10 to 15 minutes on drones. But before we get into that, I wanna take a second to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Chevron Lubricants. Protecting your diesel engine and its exhaust after treatment system has traditionally been seen as an either or proposition when it comes to choosing the engine oil that's going to protect your system. And that's exactly why Chevron spent more than a decade of R&D work developing a no compromise formulation. Now, I don't have to tell you why a clogged DPF is bad news, but here's the real kick in the pants. 90% of that ash clogging up your DPF and then upping your fuel and maintenance costs, it comes from your engine oil. You might be thinking, why don't they make an engine oil with less ash in it then? You'll be happy to learn that Chevron agrees with you. They've developed a new ultra low ash diesel engine oil that is specifically designed to combat DPF ash clogging. Dello 600 ADF with OmniMax technology cuts sulfate ash by 60%, radically reducing the rate of DPF clogging and extending the DPF service life by two and a half times. Before you had to choose between protecting your engine or your after treatment system, now you don't. Dello 600 ADF with OmniMax technology. It's time to kick some ash. Well, Zach, thank you so much for taking time to be on the dirt today. I really appreciate your time. Hey, Brian, nice, uh, nice to meet you too. Thanks for having me on. How do drones really benefit your business in the dirt industry? How can they really have an impact? Okay, so drones are really just a, another tool a contractor can add to his toolbox. Uh, no different than, say, GPS or a laser if you're looking at grade control. So what, what most of our contractors use drones for is to help them make better decisions, you know, with the information that we can gather with them or, or help them gather. So what oftentimes they do, they might fly a pre-construction topo to verify the yardage move for the site. Uh, that will help them make sure that they're, they're charging and getting paid properly. They might conduct a monthly topo surveys to see uh, see where they stand on the site and, and get lined up for pay applications to pay properly and, and also have proof of the work that they did. Some will just check simple stockpile calculations. Uh, we've had guys do things as, uh, as simple as stockpiles of wood chips from shipping projects to, to verify the yards that they've removed. So the, the real key there is that they're, they're making better decisions with the data. It doesn't necessarily change their entire business or how they do it but they'll use that information for, uh, for billing, uh, for production data. And a lot of times it'll trickle down into when they bid projects, they'll have a better handle on how much dirt they've moved, where they've moved it, and how fast they can move it with different hauling systems. So at what point uh, as a contractor, do I kind of hit that threshold on my project size to where it really makes sense to start moving into the drone world as opposed to going out there with my laser and grade rod and doing some kind of quick rough takeoffs? It's a dollars and cents and a time kind of thing. So. We've had projects anywhere from a couple acres that maybe were topoed with a drone for uh, to help put together a simple drainage design. And uh, obviously we've had projects that are hundreds of acres, thousands or miles, it, you know, so it, it varies quite a bit, but it, it really gets into dollars. Like we worked with one contractor who was doing a dam project and it was the job site area was only about two acres, but there were some issues with the volume calculations on it and on change orders were not getting calculated correctly. So that one drone flight paid him about $250,000 in, uh, in uh, change orders that he would not have been paid. So just looking at the size of the job, it may not have made any sense to use a drone, but to have that good ortho photo and the good 3D data that you can then tie back to your survey control was you know, almost invaluable to him. I mean, that contractor flies almost every site now, even if you know, sometimes, I guess in my mind, it doesn't even seem necessary, but you know, he's got the backup if he needs it. What is the process for kind of stepping into the drone world? How do I even begin there? Do I need to go purchase something or is this something where you'd recommend maybe hiring an outside firm at least to get your feet wet? How would you recommend someone get into that space? Sure, sure. It, it depends a little bit on your area. So if you have the ability or someone, you know, somewhat local that you can hire to come out and fly your project, process your data. And if you don't have takeoff software help you with the volume calcs, that's a great way to step into it. And, and that's what a lot of our clients do because they have the option, right? 
So that's probably the best way to start to get a handle on it, see what the process is and see what the data can do for you and how you can use it in your software or have that company handle the calcs for you. Um, the second best option or would probably be to purchase a drone and take care of the flights yourself and then hire an outside company that could be anywhere in the country to process the data for you and then help you out with the data side of it. So with contractors, usually there isn't much time to collect the data that you need on a job site. Uh, you might just have a day or a few hours. So it can be tough to put that out. We found a lot of contractors like to complete their own flights on their terms and when they need it, and then uh, and then have the data, data processed by an outside firm. But we do have some that pull the data processing in-house and, uh, and, and run their own calcs on it too. I guess, and I consider myself relatively up to date on technology, but that's something I hadn't even considered is the fact that you don't necessarily have to do all of the data analysis and ingestion in house. You could just fly the drone aspect and then outsource the actual ingestion and the, and the usage of the data. Yeah, absolutely. So that's, uh, that's most contractors aren't, you know, computer guys. I mean, most of our, our clients are anywhere from the owner operator with one, two, three employees, you know, up to say 100 or 200 employees. And, and somewhere in there, there's a threshold where you can start to justify, you know, hiring some of that technology staff. But in general, for most of our clients, obviously, it's, it's best for them to hire that out. You know, they can, they can put that, that price into each bid. They can get the work done they need on each job site. And if they don't need it for the next three jobs, they don't have all the equipment and the computers and the and the person sitting there, you know, waiting on that next job or trying to find something for them to do. So th there are a lot of options to outsource data. And, and I don't think it's something contractors need to be afraid of. You just need to be buyer beware, you know, especially when you get started with the new service provider. You need to take a look at their data, make sure it's accurate, make sure it's matching back to survey control for the site and, and just, you know, verify their quality and, you know, ask around. It's a, it's a small enough industry that you can pretty quickly figure out who, who knows their stuff and, and who doesn't. So I don't want to get into any secret sauce. I don't want to dive into any exact numbers and give away trade secrets, but just to give some of these contractors who have never dealt with this an idea, what are you looking at uh, roughly to have someone come out and do turnkey? We're going to handle all of the drone flights. We're going to handle all, the, all of the data ingestion. Uh, and then what are you roughly looking at if I, as a contractor, wanted to go out and get a drone to start actually doing my own flights? So to start with hiring out the, hiring out all the work and the flights and the data, uh, I've seen prices around the industry anywhere from around you know eight to twelve hundred dollars for somebody very local. That would definitely be the low end. I'd say a lot of the projects seem to come out in that oh fifteen hundred to say twenty five hundred or, or maybe even three thousand dollar range. Uh, it seems to cover the the on site capture and the processing and, and maybe some basic site calculations. Now, if you get into to more and more work in the office and take off type stuff, that can, that can start to add up a little more, depending on how involved it is. Now, if you wanna go out and fly with your own drone, uh, you'll have to get a FAA Part 107 license, which is pretty common anymore. It's not that difficult to get, it just takes a little bit of time. And then uh, to buy into a drone, you're gonna look in, oh, to get a system with a couple batteries, you're gonna be probably around that $5,000 range. And you're also going to need some kind of ground control targets. Uh, you can start off just painting those on the ground, but we like to see a dedicated ground control target with a very clear center that helps uh, tighten up your data on the back end. So, and then a processing price per project that can run anywhere from, you know, say 200 to 250 for a smaller project, you know, up to three to $400 for some of the larger ones. And then obviously it can go up from there for very large or complex projects, but it's really pretty reasonable and uh, something that can you'd be justified fairly quickly on most jobs. I mean, all it takes is a, you know, a bust on yardage of a few thousand yards or, or tens of thousands of yards sometimes. And, you know, the cost of the, the drone and the drone data goes out the window. You know, you've, uh, you've got that paid back in a second. So that's, that's money you would have never seen. That's what I was about to say. I, I feel like with a lot of this technology, most, most guys in the industry, it, it's technology. It's going to be really expensive, so I'm not even going to look that direction. But when you really start to break it down and you start to look into these technology, whether it's drones or GPS, you start to realize that, first of all, the price tag isn't as bad as you thought it was going to be. But then secondly, like you just mentioned, very quickly it becomes obvious that you can pay for this investment within one or two would be oopses you have totally more than paid for whatever the technology is you're investing in and i would say drones is a great example of that and and any experiences that you have that you could share with us on 
uh, well, you actually shared a couple already, but but any one particular one that sticks out in your mind that that really it saved the day. Uh, so we had a contractor a, a couple years ago was doing a small subdivision. There were maybe thirty homes in it. It, it wasn't very big. But it had a, a few change orders through the course of the project. So fortunately, he, he'd actually, he hires us to fly. So he hired us to fly it after he stripped the site. So we had a good subgrade model. And then throughout the job, there were some changes to the road that the city required. And the biggest change was they changed to all walkout basements. But the job was not walkout basements prior. So that required a large amount of extra earth moving that was not in the original bid. And there were some arguments over how many yards were here, how many yards were there, what it was going to take. So we were able to come in and fly that for him. Uh, he, he helped us calibrate to the site with his machine control, all the drone data tied back to his machine control models and design, and showed about an extra 30,000 yards there. So that was, you know, that was money that he was having a hard time you know, getting from the developer. He was very clearly able to show them how much was moved and, and exactly where it was moved from. You know, it should have coming out of the basement areas. It wasn't some you know, extra earth moving they goofed up and did twice or something on the site, something like that. So that one had a few different things. That contractor also does his own uh, own wood chipping. So he knew how many yards of wood chips he had there, uh, how many he could sell. We were able to measure the amount of topsoil on the site for him. So the developer knew how much extra topsoil was there for the next phase. Uh, there was actually some extra earth left over on site that you know we were able to measure the stockpile of, and they're able to use that on the next development. And also the, the city required some fairly simple as built and ortho photo uh, covered most of those as built requirements. So just from a couple drone flights on that simple site, I mean, he was able to get a, a 30,000 yard change order, cover his as built, figure out how much topsoil was on site. Uh, figured, the developer was able to see how much dirt they had left over for the next phase of development, which did need fill. And uh, they were able to cover, like I said, a simple, simple as built requirements too. So. A lot of a lot of different pieces of the puzzle were filled in there with just a just a couple of drone flights and a few thousand dollars. If I'm going to go outsource all of my actual data ingestion, and I just want to be able to fly my drone, how difficult it is is it to actually fly the drone? It's not very hard. There are a lot of resources online. I mean, we have some stuff on our website and YouTube channel that can help. But uh, all you really have to do is get a you know get a drone with a decent camera. I mean, the Phantom Four Pro has kind of been the industry standard. Load some software on an iPad and you can do your flight plan, which is all pre-planned. You don't physically have to take the pictures or fly the drone in a certain pattern. It's all automated. And then when it comes to ground control, if you have uh, your own GPS system, which most contractors do now, uh, you can measure in your ground control with that GPS system. So you already bought and owned that, you know, that equipment. So all you have to do is get a drone you can fly with. Uh, it's pretty simple to learn to take good pictures with it and fly the pattern. You shoot in your ground control with a GPS, you already own and know how to operate. And, and that's really all you have to do to get started. You know, after that, you can outsource your data from there. All you have to do is hand your data processor that control file with your ground control and your, and your photos. To do a project site, to, to measure it and, and do a topo, it usually takes an hour or two, including ground control. And that's most of the smaller sites, say 40 acres or less, is the vast majority of them we see. So for a couple hours, you can collect all that data and have it in your back pocket to measure your production. Uh, prove the prove the amount of material you've moved to uh, to the owners of the city, and uh, yeah, it pretty well covers it. I mean, there's there's a lot of decisions that you can make better with a little bit of drone data and a few bucks. Well, thank you. I, I mean, really, thank you for the information. As all of these conversations that I have, whether it's GPS or it's you know new software packages or drones. Most of the industry gets very, very scared. The knee jerk is that first of all, it's going to cost too much money. But secondly, it's just it's way too complicated for me as and especially these guys that you know, maybe it is a four or five man crew. I'm a small company that doesn't make sense for me to get into. That's just way too expensive and way too complicated. And yet through these conversations, you very quickly recognize that it's not as advanced as it sounds. And two, like the example you just demonstrated, it can save your butt in so many different ways. So, Sure, it, it leverages your time. So really some of our most successful contractors with drones are the smaller contractors because it saves them time and money. They're not, not out riding around in a side-by-side -side trying to topo a site to prove out the yardage they moved. They, they get all the data in one drone flight. Uh, it's, it's a straightforward process to do. They don't have to handle the data on the computer. And, and they're done with it. So it, it's kind of a force multiplier if, if you apply it right and, and use that data to make better decisions. Well, thank you again to Zach Peeper and thank you again to Quantum Land Design for coming on the show and just giving us a quick little rundown on drone technology and how it is impacting the industry. As you heard him say, there are a number of ways that these units can absolutely save your butt. 
where traditional methods of getting those takeoff numbers just don't work or they aren't as accurate as you need them to be. Drones can be a very, very efficient tool to get you a lot of information quickly. So as always, I hope this has been helpful. We'll catch you guys on the next episode of The Dirt. <laughs>